I'm Dave Hetzel and I'm with Walls, Wellacoochee, Wispacoochee, Alapaha, <clears throat> and Little River System Watershed Coalition. Hi, I'm John Quarterman. I'm president of the Walls Watershed Coalition. And uh, the video is uh, I'm doing on behalf of Lowndes Area Knowledge Exchange, just like last year. They'll be on YouTube so everybody can see what went on. Great. Appreciate all you coming. There is a spot in the agenda for public comments. If anybody wants to make one uh, or two comments, uh, feel free. I will probably, it's towards the end of the agenda, so I'll, uh, I'll recognize anybody who would like to just think about any comments you want to make towards the end of the meeting, and I will recognize some people for public comments. Believe we'll anything else? I think that's all. Take it away. Awesome, thank you. As I said, I'm Lee Askew, I'm from Carbons and Institute of Government, and I'm pleased to be with this council again to facilitate your activities over the next couple of months. What I just want to do really quick is we'll run through the agenda. There are a couple of things that we need to um, to take care of before we kind of get into the meat of the meeting. Um, we need to just kind of review the operating procedures and affirm that uh, MOA that was uh, signed by the council in 2009 between the council and EPD and um, DCA, which basically just kind of set the rules for how you operate. Uh, we'll need to review the chair and vice chair positions um, and affirm those. Um, then we're going to kind of have an orientation of sorts, really more of a review of the process to date. As, as many of you know, and as I know some of you have asked me, where do things stand with council appointments and reappointments? And what I can honestly tell you is I don't have an answer for you. Um, what I do know is this. Uh, when you are appointed to a board in the state of Georgia, you serve on that board until you are either reappointed or replaced. And so even though all of your appointments occurred for three-year terms about seven years ago, um, you'll continue uh, with your appointment until we're told otherwise. Um, and so, you know, I know how you feel. Do I keep coming? Do I not? Am I, am I going to still be here in October or somebody else? And I can be, I can quite honestly tell you that we may sit with one council today and we may meet again at the end of July and have a totally different council. And that's just where we are in the appointment and reappointment process. Um, there are only two councils that have been fully appointed or reappointed. That's the Coastal Council in the Coosa, North Georgia. Um, there are several councils who have had no action at all, and there are several councils that are partially appointed or reappointed. And so you will um, you'll probably know before me um, your status, but I appreciate you being here and being willing to continue uh, as, a, as a member of the council and, and until we know otherwise. So we're just kind of all in that same boat. Um, well, so, so the kind of the orientation will be just a refresher for you. You all started with this project, product, project from the beginning, so, so you'll, you'll be familiar with what we'll talk about. There are three work products that we're going to be developing over the next couple of months. We're going to work on two of those today and talk some about the third. Um, so again, the discussion of intercouncil planning, I'll describe that in more detail later. Um, identifying key implementing actors. And then we'll talk a little bit about the review and revision recommendations. That's really the meat of this process that moves us towards the revision of the plan that will be adopted in 2016. So the actual revision of the plan is not taking place right now, but what we are doing is developing, um, we're, we're beginning kind of a, a list of what do we need, what does this council need to know to revise your plan? Um, from that, again, we'll look at the next meeting dates. We always have the public comment, and, and then we'll adjourn. So that's kind of where we are right now. And I guess the, the thing that we should probably do first is I know that in your notebook, uh, you'll find the MOA um, a couple of sections back. And again, it's the same document that you uh, entered into in June of 2009 with EPD and DCA. And basically what it does is it says, you're the water council, and here's what you're charged with doing, and here are your responsibilities, and EPD's responsibilities, and DCA's responsibilities. And then it sets out 
um, a little bit of guidance on how you're going to operate. And so I guess, uh, Scott, what would probably be appropriate is for you to call for a motion to affirm that and, and um, continue to operate under that MOA. Well, what does our forum situation have to do with that? Right. Well, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I honestly don't know. I think we can kind of just dance with him up front. So. Yeah. Okay. So can I get a motion on the floor for the approval of the MOA? So, right. Got a motion by Dan. Second. Second by Rich. Second by Dan. Second by Rich. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Great. Carries. The next is um, affirming the chair and vice chair. Now, Grady has been serving as the vice chair. And, um, I didn't hear from him about this meeting. Um, and then, of course, Scott has been serving as the chair. And um, so we can affirm that you and Grady continue if, if there are other nominations. Sure the right methodology was used. 
There were some preliminary forecasts that were made, and those were put out to the councils for review, as well as input from local governments uh, and water use sectors. And from there, they found, we finalized the forecasts. And so how did that then kind of all mesh together? Well, you had from the forecasts and from the availability of both water quality and quantity, we were able to identify gaps. And those gaps basically said, here are places that we either don't have the supply to meet the demands, or we don't have the water quality that we need. So there were the two different kinds of gaps. And what that told us then was, through the vision and goals that each council created, what management practices needed to be put in place to adjust the demand and resource capacity. So what are those tools from the toolbox that we needed to put out there to say, hey, with these measures, we can change this. And from that, from developing those plans, uh, we then had the recommended uh, regional water plans. And you each have in your notebook a copy of the plan um, in case you haven't you know, kept it on your coffee table all these years um, on a CD to, to review. So let's look a little bit more at the gaps and what that meant. We knew that here was our forecast. Here's the amount of water we had available. And here's our demand projected out over time. And so those gaps meant that over time, the resource didn't meet our needs. And so what we had to do was put those management practices in place to try and change that demand line. And so over time, with, say, conservation practices put in place, the demand was reduced, and over time, that gap closed, and it moved. And again, what we were doing was pushing it out over time. The other management practices look at increasing the resource capacity. And so again, this just shows, okay, over time, if we're pushing out how we're using, uh, how much we're using, we're also shifting what's available in the future. So management practices, again, uh, were put in place to, to try and change that availability of resource. And from that, from understanding here are our gaps, here are the management practices we're going to put in place to help address those. It then set us up to have that regional plan. And again, uh, you have the plan on, on CD. And once those plans were, were put in place, once they were, were adopted by the councils, um, the director of EPD would either adopt the recommended plan as it, would, as it was submitted, advise the council of any changes that needed to be made, or adopt a recommended plan with conditions. And basically, part of what EPD did, and I'll actually get to this in a second, is to make sure your plans were in compliance with laws that were already on the books. Because we didn't want to put anything out there as a, as a plan that was, that was not in keeping with the practices already in place. So what were the council's responsibilities and what are going to be your responsibilities in the future? Well, we're going to revise the current plan. We don't have the exact timetable for that yet. We do know that it will have to be adopted sometime in the fall of next year. So we have a little over a year. Uh, probably adoption about the same time, September or October of 2016. It's when we'll, we'll have that revised plan submitted to EPD. And we'll be making those revisions based on EPD, and, and then we'll make any revisions to the plan uh, based on EPD and public comment, and we'll finalize. EPD also has some responsibilities in this. They're going to provide guidance and a template to make sure that the, that the plan revisions are complete and consistent. They're going to provide a public notice as well as a 45-day comment period after the revised plan is submitted. And again, this is, this is work in the future. This isn't um, the exact work that we're going to be doing over the next couple of months. They will review the recommended revised plan for consistency with the state water plan rules and other guidance. They'll adopt the recommended revised plan if it's consistent with those things. And then they'll use that final adopted revised plan to guide their decision making. One of the real important elements of this, and as I said, EPD will provide a 45 day public comment period on the revised plan, uh, is public participation. And as you know, this meeting and all other Water Council meetings are open to the public. And I think it's, to me, as someone who does meeting facilitation and process, public participation is vital in making sure um, you, know, you have comments from, from all sectors that you involve and engage people in meaningful ways. 
And so by providing uh, the documents on the web and, and the public comment periods, as well as direct solicitation of public input, like we have today at, at this meeting, um, I think it helps make, makes for a better and stronger plan. And so um, public participation, I think, is, is one of the key elements of this. So what's next? What are the council responsibilities right now? What are we tasked with doing? We have three pretty quick things to create. And I say this because you can see the deadlines up there. June 30th, July 31st, and August 31st. Uh, we're going to be developing recommendations for enhancing inter-council planning. We're going to be developing a plan for engagement of key implementing actors. And then we're going to be working to identify plan elements most relevant for the five-year review and revision. And I think one thing to keep in mind when we talk about the five-year review and revision is this plan has been in place for not quite five years. That is not a lot of time. In the big scheme of seeing how much um, water savings there can be, water quality, but on the quality and quality side, it's not a huge window of time. And so in our review and revision, some of the things that we're going to be considering and that, that I hope we'll be able to start identifying today are what do you need to know as a council to help make those decisions? What are the big changes within the region that may impact how the plan needs to be revised? So that's, that's one of the things we'll talk about. Are there any questions so far? Have I thoroughly confused? And I, and I think that one thing is you all were all at the table for the, developing the first plan. So you know what that process was. Um, some other councils I work with, they have new members who weren't at the table. And so kind of taking them on that tour of, of how it was done in the first place has been helpful in, in them understanding the process and that this is more than just sitting around the table and, and thinking about, uh, thinking about uh, how we might save some water or improve some water quality, that we have some real meaningful data that's input, uh, that's put into this decision making. So if there are no questions, what I'd like to do is just go ahead and start um, a discussion about the inter-council planning. And what I'd like you to think about are a couple of different things. 